colorectal cancer is one of the most commonly diagnosed cancers in the U.S. In fact, of cancers affecting both men and women, colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in the United States. However, with recommended screenings, this cancer can be prevented or detected early when it can be more easily and successfully treated. Joining me now to educate us about the disease and prevention is Dr. Henry Amos with Baptist Cancer Institute. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Well, um, I understand this March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Tell us a little bit about this disease. Well, it's a terrible disease. It uh, attacks a lot of people, and uh, fortunately, there's a lot we can do about reducing the morbidity that, and mortality that goes with it. Uh, uh, for example, in the United States, there's about 150,000 new cases a year. Those numbers don't mean a lot to people. It's hard to conceptualize that number, but you can think of two college football stadiums. And that's a lot wow. of people. And so if you, I like to do it in football stadiums. And so we'll have two football stadiums of new colon cancers in the next 12 months. And about 50,000 or nearly a football stadium will die um, mm -hmm. unnecessarily. Um, that number can be greatly reduced by certain methodologies. Well, we appreciate you here uh, trying to reduce that number by sharing some messages here. Mm -hmm. First of all, who's at risk for developing this disease? Well, we all are, and the most important risk factor is age. As we get older, I know you're with the Council on Aging, the older you get, the greater your risk. And so age is, is the single most overwhelming determinant of your risk factor. Uh, the other important things are just a healthy lifestyle, and we all know what that is. You know, excessive smoking, excessive alcohol can increase your risk of colon cancer. Balanced diets reduce it. Uh, moderate exercise or just any kind of exercise, just a non-sedentary life. The things that we all think of as just a healthy lifestyle can reduce your chances. And then there are other factors that you can't control, like who your parents were and what the genetics are and that sort of thing. But the individual, from a prevention standpoint, uh, can just concentrate on a healthy lifestyle and be aware that as he gets older, his risk level increases. Well, what should people uh, be looking for or how can they ensure an earlier diagnosis? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, just to make a contrast, for example, and uh, the four big killers are lung, breast, prostate, and colon. With lung, the emphasis is on prevention, and that's cigarette smoking. With the others, breast, prostate, and colon, it's more a question of finding the cancers early, screening programs. And we can dramatically reduce the death rate through proper screening programs. Anybody who thinks it can't be done can just look at cervix cancer, for example. Cervix cancer is not even in the top 10 anymore because of the pap smear. And when I started practice, I treated 30, 40 new cases every year. And now I might see three a year. And it's the pap smear that, that just really wiped out cervix cancer. We can do the same thing with the other cancers that we screen for mammography for breasts, PSA for prostate, and colon screening programs for the colon. What type of screening process are you referring to? Tell us a little bit about the screening. Well, there are different levels of screening. For example, some are very simple. Uh, they, you can test for blood in the stool. Some cancers will bleed early on. Uh, and so it's a simple thing for your doctor to test your stool for blood every year. And mm -hmm. there are different ways of doing that, but he can talk with you about that. Mm -hmm. So stool tests for blood is one. About every five years, the cancer, uh, American Cancer Society recommends that you have some sort of colon examination. That can be examining the distal colon with a sigmoidoscopy, for example, or a certain type of barium enema with air in it that can show you cancers early on. The single most important thing that you can do, though, is the colonoscopy, the flexible colonoscopy that goes all the way around the colon to the uh, right side. That, and that's done uh, every 10 years according to the latest Cancer Society recommendations. So I would say the flexible colonoscopy is the thing that's going to have the largest impact on the death rate in the United States. Well, what about myths that may uh, exist? Tell us a little bit about uh, fact versus fiction here. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, there's been a lot written, and everybody's looking for the key that's going to make the big difference. And people had theories about fiber and vegetables and uh, carotenoids and other things that, that can go into the diet that make a big difference. But those really are not important. Just a balanced diet with a healthy lifestyle is what the individual can do. And it's important that you don't get too overwhelmed by these things that you read about the myths, about the panacea that's going to make the big difference because they themselves can be unhealthy. Just a balanced, healthy diet and 
in, in, in exercise and moderate, you know, for your age, ex exercise. What healthy about, lifestyle. What about fear of some of these screenings? I know I've heard people uh -huh. talk about colonoscopies and, oh, something may happen and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, well, is, that, not, is that a valid concern? Not right. anymore. It, and it's a distasteful thing, and that's the biggest uh, stumbling block we have with colon cancer today. Just the thought of it is distasteful to people. But I can tell you it's so well worked out. They're endoscopy centers that are just expert. They do dozens of these every day. A patient is sedated. There's a bowel prep the day before. But you go in sedated and then you don't feel anything. You don't feel the probe, you don't feel anything. Uh, and the, the procedure is a short time, it's done by an expert that can tell just by looking what he's dealing with. It takes about 10 years to get from a small polyp to a cancer. And so this is a very effective way of de at detecting colon cancer very early on. It's painless, it just takes some time, maybe an afternoon every 10 years. Now that's not too much to have a great impact on your chance of survival. Mm, really isn't. Well, is this something, uh, these screenings, is this something that someone can arrange on their own or do they need to talk with their physician uh, and have them arrange it or their health fairs and that type of thing where this is available? Tell us a little bit about how someone would get to that screening process. And everybody ought to have a family doctor of some type Who's, who can help you with this. And all you have to do is say, hey, doc, it's time for my colonoscopy. I was looking, I haven't had it in mm -hmm. the past 10 years. I haven't one of these, had one of these in the past five years. And he's very adept. He deals with it all the time. If he doesn't do the procedure himself, he knows who to send you to, and it can be done painlessly. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. I, you can't convince people not to worry about it. So they have to go through it before they realize they don't have to worry about the procedure. Well, um, how important are these type of awareness months? Do these really make a difference? Oh, they really do. I think back years ago, I'll tell you about the pap smear. You know, 25, 30 years ago, I was preaching about the pap smear like I'm preaching about colonoscopy today. I was preaching about mammography. I was pe preaching about PSA tests. The, the, the death rate from colon cancer is coming down because of these kinds of television programs. This awareness of the public, it's dropping. And this is a wonderful thing. It's not due to advances in medicine. The biggest thing we can do, we can cut the death rate from colon cancer down dramatically just by things like this, making people aware and to go do it. It doesn't well, take another dollar's research. Well, that's great, great news. So if our viewers want more information, where could they find this? Well, uh, they can get it from their family doctor. They can get it from the American Cancer Society. They can get that online, or they can call and get a brochure, either pick it up or send it to them. Or they can call us. You know, we have cancer awareness programs. There are meetings that they can come to. Any of the major hospitals can offer you some advice about their programs for patient education and, and awareness. Everybody in the healthcare industry is singing the same song here about the importance of these screening tests. And any of the institutions can help you. You can call our number at Baptist Hospital, which has been given to you online mm -hmm. here, and we'll tell you who to go to if you just want to understand it. Right. But your primary doctor is a good place to start. Well, Dr. Amos, thank you very much for being here. It's great information, and um, we'll hopefully it will make some difference. Well, thank you very much. I hope this goes the way of the pap smear. <laughs> okay.